was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on a pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the word of God for the children of God. And I speak to God. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent, and we are entering into this journey. Together, we started it on Ash Wednesday, and uh, we're going to be spending the next 40 days in the wilderness. Uh, so we want to think about uh, this passage of scriptures. Typically and traditionally, the story that we hear on the very first Sunday of every Lent, when Jesus goes into the wilderness, and Jesus is tempted of the devil. And this week, as I was preparing for this message, I met with uh, a couple of folks from Carter Station for the class that I'm taking and collaborative preaching. And we looked at these scriptures and we talked about these scriptures and we focused in on the gospel lesson for us today and we had a great conversation. And I thought I knew exactly kind of what I was going to say uh, going from that uh, moment. And then I woke up Friday morning. As Jan was getting ready for school, she woke me up, the TV was on, and she says, look at what's going on in Japan. And uh, I began to watch uh, the events unfold and what was taking place in Japan. She went off to school on Friday, and I stayed at the house and watched and saw uh, the predictions and the anticipation, the anxieties that were coming, and the fear that was uh, being built up for Hawaii and for the West Coast. Everybody was scared. What was going to happen? What was going to take place? They were worried people are asleep. Well, they know what's going on. My roommate is from San Francisco, so I had a special investment uh, in what was going on. I got on the phone, and I began to call him because I knew he was an hour behind us in Nashville. He was probably asleep and unaware of what was going on as well. I got his answer, and she left him a voicemail message and uh, I let him know, you know, if you got friends out there, you know, we give them a call and have them wake up and tune in to see what's going on. Then about 9.30, my phone rang, and Greenville Middle School called me and said, you're going to have to come and pick up Janet. She's sick, she's thrown up, she's weak, she can't drive home. I thought, my goodness, isn't it something how the world just seems to change? Instantly, we go from a, one thing to a problem in just a matter of mere minutes and hours and seconds and I continued to watch the news. I brought Janet home. We were waiting to take her to the doctor. He would sit there and watch that news. I haven't been able, you know, breaks kind of afford me the luxury to watch a little news. I've been disconnected and not uh, aware of what's going on for a long time. So I was drawn in and captivated. I kept watching the news. I kept watching the news. I took her to the hospital on Friday night. She continued to throw up and get sicker and sicker. And I took her to the emergency room and pumped in about four bags of IV fluids into her. We spent the night in the hospital. and woke up Saturday morning. Flip the news back on while she was resting in the hospital and begin to watch it. And all the time I'm thinking about today. I'm thinking about what am I going to talk about? How am I going to work on this? Because I wanted to reflect on these events. This morning we're thinking about the wilderness. And the wilderness is a scary place to be. It's a place where a lot of anxiety lies. A place of uncertainty. A place where life is in danger. And I began to think of how that compared to what was going on as we saw those horrific images of the tsunami in Japan. And I began to think about how terrified the people must be in that region of the world. 
And as I thought about these questions that become present uh, to Christ, as, as Satan is continually hammering him, we talked about uh, in our meeting how Christ's identity was being challenged. Previously, uh, in chapter 3, we see that Jesus has just been baptized by John. And it is right after his baptism, the scripture says, that the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When I read that, I began to think, man, I need to pray the Lord's Prayer a lot harder. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Don't make me do what Christ had to do. Deliver me from that temptation. We don't want to go through what Christ went through. We don't want to know the agony that Christ went through. We don't want to know the terror that the people of Japan felt and are continuing to feel this morning. Those temptations that came to Jesus during his wilderness wandering were refuted by Jesus by appealing to the story of his community as they were in the wilderness, wandering with Moses from Egypt to the Promised Land. While Jesus was in the desert, he responds to Satan with scriptures that come from that very story of the children of Israel being in the desert. It's not a coincidence. Matthew is showing us and recording these stories and painting a picture for you and for me today. As I thought about that, uh, one thing really jumped off of the page. Satan continues to ask him, if you are the Son of God, if you are who you say you are, if you're so great, do this, do that. Show yourself, prove yourself. Matthew starts out with this pattern of temptation for Jesus. And it continues throughout his gospel all the way to the cross. And even on the cross, Matthew reiterates that same temptation that Jesus faced in the wilderness. You remember what the people said when Jesus was hanging on the cross? If you're the Son of God, come down off that cross. Prove yourself. Call on your angels. Get out of this mess if you're the Son of God. Our identities continue to be challenged in our lives. And Lent is all about an identity. It's about creating and working on and maintaining and developing our identity as Christians. Historically, Lent was the season of preparation for new converts to the faith to begin to prepare for their Easter baptism, to prepare for their identity into a birth into the church, a birth into new life, and being raised as a new person out of the baptismal waters. And I thought about that. I couldn't help but see those images of the waters rushing in on the coastline. The psalm that we read this morning talked about protection from the waters. It kind of gave me eerie chill bumps to think about these scriptures and what's going on and how it's paralleling what is happening in our time. But when Jesus is tempted in this second temptation and he responds by saying it is written thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God he's talking about a very specific incident in the wilderness. When the children of Israel are complaining to Moses and wanting to know why have you brought us out here to die? Why have you brought us into this desert to die of thirst? There's no water here, Moses. What are you doing? Why are you calling us out here into this type of a life? Moses is frustrated. And he names that uh, place where they're at, uh, quarreling and bickering. And he ends in Exodus chapter 17, if you want to look at the story. And I think it's in verse number 7, I think it's 17. He named it quarreling because it was at this point where the children of Israel brought up the question, is the Lord God among us or not? Their identity was being challenged. Their faith was at a crossroads. Tragedy puts us in the crosshairs of doubt, fear, and anxiety. And we begin to ask those same questions. If we're honest with ourselves, I'd say all of us have asked those same questions. If you're God, if you're the Lord, if you're the Son of God, why is this happening? What is going on? If, if, if we're haunted by that little word, if. And it's at times of tragedy, it's at times like these, that I need to hear and be reminded of the fact that Christ didn't sidestep the wilderness. 
that Christ didn't skirt around the cross. But Christ walked through the wilderness for 40 days. Christ hung on the cross until he passed on and gave his spirit back. Christ endured. Christ persisted. Christ entered into the human condition that we hear about in Genesis. When Adam and Eve, the story of our beginnings, tell us that they fell and that sin began to enter into the world. And Paul talks about this parallel between Adam and Christ and how things went wrong and how Christ is here to make things right. And Matthew is building on that for his community, reassuring them that Christ is powerful. Christ is victorious. Christ has succeeded where I have failed, where I continue to fail, where I cannot stand up with the strength that Christ stood with. But I know that Christ is with me. And I know that Christ is for me. And I know that Christ is pulling for me. And that Christ is on my side. And that Christ suffered just as I suffered. <coughs> just as you suffer. He feels the pains of the world in the exact same way that we do. Our God is a God who has not abandoned us. Who has not removed himself from our situation of the fallen state that we find ourselves in. But he's entered into death. He's entered into this realm of existence. And he shared that with us. What do we celebrate at Advent? Emmanuel. God is with us. I need to be reminded of that over and over and over and over again. Were I to have awakened in Japan, I'm sure I would have had a tearful lament from the Psalms upon my lips as I lifted up the debris, looking for my family. As I began to search through the debris, trying to find just some resemblance of life and find some hope in this situation. I probably would have been tempted to quarrel as the children of Israel did and asked that very same question. Is God among us or not? Where is God? Why has this happened? And I need to be reminded that God is here. That God is with us. That God is enduring this together with us. Shirley made an important statement in our meeting that I think kind of helped me solidify the direction that I wanted to go in this morning. She made a statement that said that Lent serves as a reminder that we're a community and that we need each other, that we depend upon each other, and that we influence each other. As the story ends of Jesus' temptation, we see that after 40 days, he's tempted. He's weak at his weakest point. He goes through these temptations with Christ. And then after these temptations are over, something happens. Angels come. And the scriptures say they begin to minister to Christ. Oh, that's the key. That's the message for us today. Our identity is found in ministering to Christ, isn't it? Christ said, when you minister to the least of these, you do too. You do it to me. When you offer that cup of water to the thirsty... You're ministering to me. Why? Because I'm with them. I'm there in that moment of pain. I'm there in that suffering. What does that say to the church today? Where can we find our identity in the midst of all of these crises that are going on in the world, in our community, in our family? We have our own worries. You know, am I going to lose my job? What's going to happen? There's fear. There's anxiety on every front. And the news is just piling it on higher and higher. I think it's an appropriate time for us to remind ourselves we're in a journey together. We're not alone. We have the support and the love of one another. And it's in these moments of crises that our godliness can begin to rise, can begin to shine, and can begin to bring forth hope. In the midst of great tribulation, we can come and, like angels, minister to Christ, who has just gone through some of the hardest things has just gone through a great trial, a great temptation, we can bring healing and restorative nurture and ministry to those who are in need. So this morning I want to remind you to keep your radar up. As Uncor begins to share with us how we can respond, Lent is a time of increased arms, a time where we concentrate on the least of these. And we're starting this season off with a picture that's is very dismal. Nuclear reactors are going into meltdown. 
We're seeing just all kinds of horrific events that are beginning to take place. Economies are going to be shaken all across the world. Why? Because we're connected to each other. We depend on each other. And Shirley said, we need each other. So this morning, may our prayers stretch across the Pacific Ocean. May they go to reach and touch a hurting people today. And as we touch them, may we be reminded that in our hurts, in our tragedies, in the dispositions we find ourselves in, we're not alone. We have each other. We have God. We have Christ who has fought the fight and who has tried and who is on our side. This morning as we come to the table, there's a little fount of water here to remind us of our baptismal vows that we have made. And as you receive the elements after you receive them, I invite you to, to touch the water and to be reminded that you have been baptized. Just as Christ received that identity as a child of God, the Son of God, in our baptism, we're reminded we're a son, we're a daughter of God as well. And may we be reminded of that today so that when doubt comes our way and we hear that jeering question from Satan, if you're a son of God, if you're a daughter of God, if you're a child of God, why is this happening? What's going on? We can be reminded that God loves us and that God is with us and that God hung in his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for us and that he went through the desert for us and has brought us together in a community of faith. May we journey together in these next few days in the season of Lent. And may we draw strength so that we can give aid and love and care and nurture to the world in which we live. It's hurting and it's living in such great fear. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 12 in the hymnals.